Hi witches! I am back! I am alive! I promise! I know I missed some videos last week. Um, because I like to be honest and open with you guys about everything, I will say um, last week I started on an antidepressant um, and the dose they gave me was just like a lot for my body to handle. I was really sick and like really really out of it. I could not make sense of the world around me basically for a couple days. I'm still kind of fuzzy so if I seem a little bit off in the next couple videos I am so sorry but that is why I'm still kind of adjusting. Um, but <laughs> I am back and I will have videos out all all week this week to kind of like make up for missing those two videos last week so super sorry about that super uh um but with all of that out of the way thank you guys so much for joining me but all of that aside let's get into today's topic which is one of my favorite topics ever a full moon and today specifically we are talking about the full sturgeon moon now the full sturgeon moon peaks at 9 36 p.m eastern standard time on august 11th um now if you are a patron we are going to actually have to celebrate on the 10th because i'm going to be traveling to a tattoo convention um on the 11th like i am leaving that morning so um we will be doing some preparatory work before for the full moon because you can celebrate the day before the day of and the day after um which is always just like a good little tip i guess um so we will be gathering on the 10th at 8 p.m and i have put up all of the ingredients for our spell for the evening it's gonna be super chill if you wanted to wait to like watch it on and follow along on the uh full moon oh my gosh um that would also work perfectly fine whatever works the best for you i'm super sorry about that i did not realize i was traveling until like today <laughs> the full sturgeon moon is also really special because it is the final super moon of the year so again a super moon just means that the moon is a little bit closer to the earth um so it looks bigger in our night sky from here on out it's gonna look smaller and farther away so sad um but it will be the final one for the year so if you are looking to kind of supercharge your spell work um if you're looking for a night to do it i would definitely recommend practicing on the 11th. Now, if you're interested in astrology, this moon is in the sign of Aquarius, meaning that it brings um, the energies of self-reliance, optimism, communication. It's an air sign, lots of creativity. So lots of exchanging of ideas. I recommend doing some divination or otherwise connecting with that element of air if you so choose. Um, and then also this is a blue moon. So we often hear that phrase once in a blue moon, but what does that really mean? Uh, well, that term blue moon is usually used um, to describe describe an extra full moon within a given season. So usually there's three, sometimes there are four. Um, so this is the fourth moon of summer. So between when we celebrated Letha um, on June 21st, and then of course the um, autumn equinox on Maven in September, but we'll talk about that next month. Don't worry about it. Um, so yes, this will be the fourth full moon that we have had for this summer. So if you can kind of connect a little bit with that summer energy, just maybe taking some time to pause, appreciate the weather, that it's warm out before it starts to get a little bit chillier, though I am admittedly kind of looking forward to that. There are also tons of different names for this full moon. So if you have never heard of the full sturgeon moon, perhaps you've heard of one of these. So this moon is also called the full green corn moon, the corn moon, the blueberry moon, the hot moon, the grain moon, the end of summer moon, the harvest, uh, the big harvest moon, excuse me, and then the joyful moon. So um, those come from a bunch of different sources and I have linked them all down below. But overall, Thursday's full moon really is all about carrying on that energy energy of Lunasa, that kind of um, gratitude for nature, for harvest, for appreciating the planet for the phase that it is in right now. So if you perhaps don't follow the wheel of the year, but still wanted to honor the seasons, this is a great time to do it. It's all about inviting in abundance. It's all about celebrating the things that you have accomplished so far this year, and also um, looking ahead for the things that you would like to kind of finish up um, accomplishing by the end of the year. So you guys are doing great. I, I know people have been following along with me for almost two years, which is so crazy. Um, and I've seen your guys' growth and I am just so proud of you every time I see it. So thank you so much for sharing your practice with me. I am so grateful for that. Um, now we are starting to get into the harvest season, even though it doesn't feel like it. And I really feel like this moon kind of caps 
off the end of summer and is like really great um, to start working on crafts for fall or preparing yourself for the winter. So now that we've talked about the general energies of this moon, let's talk about some correspondences and how you can celebrate because I see a lot of videos on YouTube about like the astrology and stuff and that is all well and good, but I am more of a hands-on earth sign type witch. So I, um, I really love talking about correspondences and ritual work and stuff. So that's what we're going to talk about. Um, now, like I said before, some of the energies that are associated with this moon um, include strength, perseverance, abundance, gratitude, health, harvest, manifestation. It is really a time to finish up any spell work that you were doing in conjunction to the intention you set during the new moon, um, or is a great time for cleansing any sort of spell work that you would like to do that day. Because this moon is in the sign of Aquarius, which is an air sign, I do really, really recommend doing some divination, maybe on what to look into or to focus on in the season ahead, which is something I always really like to do um, like around Maybun. Or just in general, if you're looking to practice, super great time to do that too. Now, if you are a green witch, you might want to focus on using herbs such as St. John's wort, if you can, um, bergamot, echinacea, rose, peppermint, um, anything that is really healing, but also very empowering. So I would say like cinnamon um, or lavender, which is protective. You might also want to include any of the herbs that you're focusing on using during Lunasa, um, if you would like. Uh, for crystals, I recommend just as usual, clear quartz, selenite, moonstone, jasper. Um, I would also recommend tiger's eye, carnelian, garnet. Again, really taking on those same energies of Lunasa as well, which I tend to find that full moons that quickly follow holidays, same sorts of energies. I would also recommend amethyst or anything that helps you connect with kind of like the divine, um, especially again, if you are focusing on divination. Now, if you're a witch who can't openly practice, I do recommend dressing in maybe some of the colors that are associated with this moon. Um, full moons are generally associated with black, white. Um, sometimes I've seen like lavender like that, um, but also this one specifically is associated with yellow, golds, reds, oranges, again, anything that you would have worn during Lunasa, right? You might also want to include symbols of abundance, such as maybe a cornucopia or grain, maybe a corn dolly from your previous celebrations, and also some of the um, symbols associated with Aquarius. Now, Aquarius is the water bearer, even though it's an air sign, I know. Um, so maybe having a pitcher of water that you are using to make moon water, um, but like having a pitcher might be nice or some sort of basin. Whenever I think of Aquarius, I think of that scene in Lord of the Rings with with um, Galadriel, which is like, things that were, things that are, and some things which may not have yet come to pass, which is not her voice at all. But um, I, I just, whenever I see that, it's just like, that is the water bearer figure for me. So Aquariuses, Aquarians, that's how, that, if I hear you're an Aquarius, that's immediately what I'm thinking. <laughs> Awesome. So now that we've talked through some of those correspondences, some of those symbols, let's talk about some spell work that you can do um, to celebrate the full sturgeon moon. Um, so the first thing that I really recommend doing is beginning to rid yourself of what no longer serves you, which full moons are great for um, getting rid of anything that you don't need, tidying things up and starting to make your house cozy for fall, um, which is one of my favorite things ever. Now, full moons in general are just a really great time for cleansing and for releasing things that you just no longer need to deal with, any of those har emotions you might be harboring, or that could extend to your physical space as well. So cleansing and releasing of things you no longer need, be getting everything streamlined so that way the holiday season is not as stressful, which is ultimately my goal, because on top of that, I also am planning a wedding and oh my gosh. The next thing that I would recommend doing is making a good nurturing meal something nutritious, but that doesn't necessarily mean it has to be vegetable laden, right? Um, this could literally be mac and cheese if it feeds your soul. You know what I mean? That's really what we're focusing on here. Um, so something that makes you happy. If you are looking to keep it on theme, perhaps doing something seafood based. I am a vegetarian. So I am not necessarily laden with all of the seafood recipes, I'm so sorry, but um, I was thinking like if I were to make something for my partner, maybe doing like a paella, um, which is super aromatic. So that's very much the element of air, but also has like seafood, which is kind of like the sturgeon, but I I don't know if, that's if I'm making the connections there or if I'm just crazy. The next thing that I do recommend doing is going out into your garden to harvest some more herbs, maybe getting some vegetables from your beautiful, 
abundant vegetable gardens if you have them. Um, I will be harvesting more of my herbs. I had, I did some on Lunasa, but I also wanted to do some during the full moon as well. Now, generally it is thought that during the new moon, it is the best time to harvest plants because the water is down towards the roots. So it's like less traumatic, but um, I, I'm thinking something like symbolic, like a tiny little cutting. Um, and perhaps, you know, you propagate that, that cutting even further. So whatever that looks like to you, just an idea. Um, and then finally, I just really recommend maybe journaling about the lessons that you've learned this year, doing some self-reflection. Um, and also thinking about like what you would like to finish up by the end of the year. So we, I know it's still like August. Um, I know some people are going back to school. So like, good luck everybody. You guys are gonna do great. Oh my gosh, don't even worry about it. If you're looking to get your life organized, it might be a good time to start thinking about systems of organization or routines that work the best for you. And begin to think about how you can implement them either starting now or, you know, waiting till the new year, if you so choose. Okay, so that is my little spiel on the full sturgeon moon. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today. I promise I am doing a lot better um, and I appreciate everyone's patience. So thank you guys so much. I'll see you in the next one. Bye. <laughs>